yeah. what a way to go out, trademark fashion. Just talk to me about what that moment was like, and it was it was a tough first round, wasn't it? You you showed yeah. all, all the frustration that had built up after that first round. What was that like? Well, it was it was tough. We knew it was going to be tough. Um, I knew his punches weren't going to have much sting on him. That probably gave me a bit of confidence after the first round. Um, but his his ground game was stronger than we anticipated. But you know, my corner, if you couldn't hear him on on the mics around the cage, were very clear in uh, defending his offense. So I felt pretty relaxed there. So yeah. And in terms of what that entrance was like, you said during the week it was going to be it was going to be emotional <laughs> for you. Just how emotional was that? We saw at the end how much it meant to you. What was that entrance like in comparison to any other entrance you've had in your career? I would say it was different, but you lot, you know, whether it's underreported or what, I always get an amazing reception here in Wembley. Mm. What, what a lot of you don't know is I've been fighting here in Wembley Arena for about 17 years. This very arena with Cade Rays, the UK promotion is on Sky Sports. <laughs> so I have a very strong fan base in the local area um so i expected and i got what i deserved in terms of reception how tough is it for yourself to walk <laughs> away from the sport after going out with a trademark win like that you're known for your knockout power it couldn't have gone any better for you tonight uh it's easy because i've been preparing for it as such um if there was something interesting on the horizon then maybe <laughs> i could get rid of this cough then maybe uh, <laughs> there'd be something that we could talk about but there's nothing there for me, you know, I've just knocked out this guy. <laughs> I've done it countless times before and, uh, yeah, man, just going to kick back on a beach somewhere and sip my ties. You're, you're one of the most, you're one of the most beloved fighters uh, this country has seen. Uh, just in terms of how much love you felt since you announced that this was going to be a retirement fight and how much love you felt from the fans <laughs> all the way through your, your career with the ups and downs, what, uh, what was it meant to you? I have to cut this short, man from but yeah the, <coughs> the loyalty has always been undeniable for me like i said in the post fight i've been at the very high of the sport and i've been all the way at the bottom <coughs> and the fans have never left me so if you had to select a, an all-time favorite moment from your career that you would say you're the proudest of just upon reflection now what, what would you select <coughs> it could possibly be this very night right here to be to be honest with you yeah it was quite special. Give me holes or some shit. Don't let any fucking mints or something. <coughs> you always get his after fast, don't you? Remember after. It's called cardiac bron bronchitis or some shit like that. Oh, it was looking like a really tricky one in this first two rounds. I mean, you had to spend a lot of time on your back. Um, how, what was going through your mind at the time, particularly just before you managed to explode out and get the yeah. finish? What was going through your mind? You knew, obviously, retirement fight, things weren't going your way on the ground. Talk us through the thought process. They weren't going my you... way, but they wasn't going his way because he wanted to choke me out, didn't he? He wanted to get the submission in. <coughs> and he didn't. Uh, my corner was very clear. I was, I was comfortable. I could hear him breathing heavily, just as heavy as I was, so I knew we were both getting tired. But I knew after the first round, I was standing, he was sat down getting his arm shake, shook out. So I knew I, <clears throat> I knew I had the beating of him kind of at, at that point in time. Um, he got the second takedown. <clears throat> and as he began to tire, I just knew that when I get out, I'm just going to smash your face in. So that was it. Uh, what a fantastic way to go out. A, a Paul Daly way to go out, should we say. Uh, we spoke on <laughs> Wednesday evening. We talked about the Mark Weir, uh, TKO win, uh, Cage yeah. Rage. And then we end it here at Wembley Arena. Coincidentally, the same again. It was this the perfect way to go out on a Paul Daly way? Uh, it was definitely special. Uh, yeah, it was special. <coughs> was that your mum in the cage at the end there? Yeah, that was my mum and the missus. Yeah. How, oh, how... Some air time. Then... <laughs> um, how nice is it to kind of share that moment with, with your mom as well? I always envisioned it when I retired, you know, because I'm quite a personal person. I keep my family separate from business as such. Um, but I knew she would love to be on BBC, so <laughs> I took her up. <clears throat> Do you see yourself uh, being still in MMA in some kind of capacity? Even Not really. I've got I've got a gym in Nottingham. I teach kickboxing. Don't really teach MMA classes. I've got Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu there. But 
I always said that was the fault of many great athletes. They try and hang around the sport for too long, whether it be commentary or sh showing up at events, and that sort of gives you the urge to want to get back in there. So, <clears throat> like I said, my ties and beaches. Yeah, Paul, legend's a word that gets thrown a lot around a lot <coughs> these days, but however, however, I think anyone in this room can agree that it definitely it suits you very well down to the ground. Thank you very much. Um, you've been around this sport for a long time. Uh, in the East Midlands, you're a legend. You go into any kickboxing gym in the, in the East Midlands, not Derby, Nottingham, Leicester, wherever. Kids want to say they look up to you. I'm sure a lot of these guys have been following your career since you were probably in primary school. What's it like knowing that you've had that impact on the sport in this country? It's quite special because I, I still am quite young in, the, young in the mind, you know. So um, I was at the, the gym the other day and one of my students was like, oh, coach, why are you retiring? I said, I've been doing it for... 20 years I said how old are you she said 21 and that just hit her then she's like wow you know you've really been at this for a long time so yeah it is quite special to have that recognition but I don't shout out for it a lot I just I just do what I love or I've done what I loved and just been good at it yeah Paul Kieran right here <laughs> uh, my question to you you know you talk about Nottingham uh, Nottingham's a, a great city and it's got great new talent. Uh, what advice would you give to young people that do follow you? I know, I know the same question that he also asked, but what <clears> advice would you give to young people that want to follow your footsteps? I've got loads of advice, but the, this, I always say the simplest is just to be yourself. And if you, if you believe in yourself and you're true to yourself, I know it's a bit corny, but regardless of what anybody else is saying or doing around you, then you're going to do pretty well. Oh, that was knockout number. 35 of your career in your MMA career at least yeah. where do you think where do you feel that ranks in terms of your favorite knockouts I have to see it back again I know I was just hitting him a lot of times and I broke my hand or some shit so I did say that the way he's had a big head so I knew it was going to be difficult to get him out of there but yeah I hit him a lot of times I think the finish was pretty good the way he fell I felt was quite one of the more dramatic finishes that I had so I have to look back at it but yeah I have to watch it again I'm sure it was up there one of the best of them yeah, Paul, just one more from me. Uh, obviously, retirement is one of these things where in MMA we see a lot of guys come back. They come back to the sport either in a um, commentary pro commentary profession or they come back and have a run. <coughs> We're seeing guys like Jim Wallhead. He's come back. He's just signed with Cage Warriors. He's got a fight agreed. Uh, Dan Hardy, he's going back to boxing. I mean, is there any chance that we might, you know, if the right offer was on the table, say, I don't know, you match MVP, Nottingham, also came through that offer on the table. For the belt for seven figures. Then, yeah, but obviously I, I would do that. Um, and that's something I thought they might try and throw a swerve ball in. But like I say, it has to be ridiculous money at a ridiculous venue. Um, I don't know how, the, how long the, the real champ's going to be out for, but that's one of the possible fights I'd be interested in. But like I say, the money has to be ridiculous and uh, the build-up has to be done properly and not done in New York when we're both from London or England. So, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Genuine. No, this is this is genuine. Like I said, um, there are very few things that are going to pull me out of retirement. Um, like a, one of the ones was that 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 fight that I mentioned in the, in the title and seven figures or whatever. But apart from that, I'm quite content in what I've achieved. Um, you know, I'm not a wealthy guy. I won't consider myself rich, but I'm comfortable. You know, I'm not I'm not an idiot. I've been smart with with what I've earned, and I've set myself up pretty nice. So I'm okay. Yeah. Congrats. Cheers. Thank you.